players who got their first playoff experience last night, getting it in that atmosphere against that franchise, how much can that help this team as you move forward in these playoffs? Uh, I, you know, if it helps us play well uh, on the road uh, and prepare for another opponent, a tough opponent, um, then it'll be advantageous. But, you know, I, I'm just, you know, proud of the way the guys handle the environment, how the way they handle the preparation. Um, thought they were focused and, and ready to go. And uh, we'll, we'll need, you know, more of that this week. Talked about the challenge, or the need to be emotionally and physically exhausted. Mm -hmm. What's the challenge in recovering from that then? Well, there is some challenge there. I think, um, you know, when you put a lot into something, um, like our players did and our coaches did, um, you know, our guys are going to get some rest and we'll have to get them back in here, um, treat and lift and, and decide what we can do uh, on practice on, on Tuesday, um, which will be a normal Wednesday for us, and then, and then work our way through the week. So you'll be open to changing your plan then uh, when you see the players in here on Tuesday? You're, you're, you're sure, yeah. I haven't met with Todd, and I, you know, I may have an idea where we are uh, at this point in the season. I'm always open uh, you know, to doing those things and, and doing what's, what's always best for the team. How's Jay on? Um, sore, like, like a lot of guys. How far has this David Long come in your eyes when, when he's the first guy off the bench when Jay was there? Um, you know, I mean, I mean, we only have so many guys at every position. And so, um, you know, our job as coaches is to get everybody ready uh, that goes to the game, those 46 players. And um, some of them have starting roles, some of them have special teams roles, some of them have uh, backup roles at one position or at multiple positions. And, um, you know, David has, has worked his way in there and, and tried to, you know, understand what to do. You know, there's some things that uh, showed up yesterday that were good and some things that uh, you don't have to continue to, to be coached on and he'll have to continue to improve on. How do you measure uh, when, you're, when you're doing your sequence on the punt and killing the time that you kill? Obviously, works out great because you, you won. But if they come down and, and kick the field goal, obviously, then you would have liked to have had the 140. How do you make that decision? You know, see how we're playing defensively, how the game's going. Um, you know, how, how Brent, you know, how Brett's punting the ball, you know, how, how we feel we, we can we can pin him down there or, um, you know, just a lot of situations as it relates to, you know, do we think that we can stop him? Do we think that, um, you know, that's, that's the right decision in that, uh, that instance. You know? how, does, how did it make you feel that, that Bill, when he did it, was all grins, and Bill, when you did it, was oh, it's, serious? I, I, I can only concentrate on one team, um, just trying to do what's best for, for us each and every week. Um, sometimes that's, that's the case, and then sometimes I have to do a better job. Do you think that's a rule that will last past this season? Again, I just try to understand what the rules are and, and play by them. Um, use them to our advantage where, where we can. I haven't gotten to go back and look at it. Do you feel like you guys had a little bit of an issue setting the edge uh, last night? Setting the edge? Um, you know, there were times where we, you know, I, I think off the top of my head, you know, had, had stunts on or something. And, and again, um, that, that's always critical. That's one of the phases to stop in the run is to be able to set the edge. Um, you, you know, and they found it a few times, but but I thought – you know, all in all, um, you know, they ran a few toss cracks that they tried to get out there on the edge. I thought we played them well. I think um, going back to preseason, that was a play that they had run against us um, in the game. In, in general, I think in the first quarter, you know, Jan and, and Rashawn were out there. Um, later on in the game, I, I can recall Kenny uh, triggering um, and, and um, Logan to stop the toss crack. So, you know, it wasn't all just on the edge. Um, there, there were some other plays, and, and, it, and again, it was um, competitive. It could have been better in the run game, but I, but I thought uh, it was good enough to allow us uh, to win. How much do you think Derek kind of welcomes touches, welcomes 32, 33 carries a game, and, and how much do you need him to be successful doing that even moving forward? I mean, I think we understand how important his um, performance and the offensive line's performance and, and the receivers that go in there. And, and get the support players, uh, how important that is to to us, and, and especially in the playoffs. Um, I think Derek trains and prepares um, to be able to, to handle that load, to carry that load. He's got a certain skill set that's size and strength, speed, durability. Um, 
These are all great qualities uh, for a running back in, in January. So he'll, he'll do everything that he has to to, to get ready um, and, and to, to do what, uh, whatever it is that uh, you know, we ask him to do in the game plan. You talked about those little details at running back, even you kind of picking up on some things since you've been in this job. Do you think that he is still developing in that way? Are you seeing him see things better even? And yeah, I mean, I think, you know, I think every, everybody continues to develop um, so that he's not just a one style back. He's very unique. There's not that many players or running backs in, in the league uh, like Derek, you know, because there's not that many players in college that are like Derek. And, and by that, I just mean a bigger tailback um, going back to, you know, guys I played with or, or against where it was, you know, Jerome Bettis. And, and again, it was a different body type, but the size um, and Eddie George. You know, now when you watch college, um, th there's just a different style of, of back. And so um, I, I do think that he's continuing to develop in, in those multiple uh, run packages or run schemes that, that we want to run. You talked about this a little bit last night, but the ability to, to run when a team is, knows you're going to run on them, how valuable can that be as you move forward? Well, I mean, it's always value. It's like on third down. If you can drop back and protect um, when the other team knows that you're, you're throwing the football, um, that, that's, a, that's a good thing to be able to protect. Um, but also when you're in the late game situations in, in what we'd call four minute, uh, if you can hand the ball off and, and, and cover them up and block them and, and guys can, can get those first downs that pretty much ice, um, ice the football game, that's always um, you know, really positive. It just, you know, to be able to get the first down when we did with, with FERC and then to come back uh, and get the first down, you know, we knew there was gonna be you know, 15 to 20 seconds left um, by doing anything. <clears throat> Um, number one in most statistical categories offensively, near the top in almost all statistical categories defensively. Um, you know, they're, they're long in a secondary, uh, physical. Uh, Judon's playing at a high level. Defensive line is um, disruptive. They play with their hands. They're hard to move. Um, offensively, I mean, they, they have the best player in the league. Um, it was impossible to tackle. A great scheme. It's almost, uh, I think on any other day, it'd be fun to watch, um, but not when you're trying to prepare for them and stop them. You know, Greg does a fantastic job. Um, you know, they're well coached, they're physical. It's, it's what the Baltimore Ravens have always been, um, especially with John. Uh, fundamentally sound, and they're good in the kicking game. Offensively, they're so different than, than everybody else. What are the challenges to getting ready for something that's not like anything you've really seen. Yeah, I mean, you know, we see it in doses, but but not as consistently as, as they'll you know, run the quarterback. And so when you run the quarterback, um, you know, everybody has to defend and, and there's an extra gap in there. There's an extra guy carrying the football. So you don't have to block them all. You can you can read one of them. <clears throat> you know, they'll read the, the four technique. They'll read the five technique. They'll read the, the end or the outside linebacker. And... Uh, it, it just is a, is, a, is a challenge to, to make sure that when you're playing option football, that based on what your call is, that everybody has responsibilities. Uh, and when somebody leaves that responsibility, uh, that's where you give up big plays. Passing numbers for you guys were, were obviously a little down yesterday. How much of that is you guys were focused on the running game so much, or, or how much of it was just a tough day at the office for the passing game? Probably a little bit of both. Game. You want to follow that up with something? I don't. Yeah. I, uh, um, well, maybe you know, Tannehill hadn't had a whole lot of what you might consider off days for you guys. Is that a, is that a challenge for him to be kind of be able to bounce back from that as well? We'll we'll try to do everything we can to to win a football game this week, and you know, if that's uh, throw it better, and we'll have to throw it better. And if it's it's to run it better, we'll have to run it better. Um, you know, it's a good defense that we played. Um, Derek was. So having a lot of success, our offensive line was moving guys off the ball, and uh, you know, again, we, we'd like to be as balanced as we possibly could be. Uh, we'd also like to win the football game. In the past, <clears throat> defending the Ravens with, with 
Lamar Jackson, it's kind of 11-on-11 11 11 football. How much does that change, like, how you have to uh, approach pass defense? Well, there, you know, sometimes you, you pull the safety out of the middle of the field, um, which then, you know, cover four is basically blitz zero without the blitz. And, uh, you know, he's athletic enough to, to buy time uh, when he has to, to, to move around. Um, he, he throws the ball from different arm angles. Um, so it's been impressive just in the few games that I've watched today, um, you know, because you, you kind of hear about what he's doing, but you've never really – you know, watched it. You've watched it a little bit just in the crossover games. Uh, but then to be able to sit there and watch them, you know, just improvise and make plays uh, when there's guys there, I'm not sure that that's how they drew up the play. But uh, that's what this league's about is guys going out there making plays. And uh, he's a special player. How did Jacob Jordan look uh, the first game back in about a month? Good. You know, tight coverage. Uh, you know, late in the game there, they um, had to have it. And, and I thought he was – and good tight um, coverage that you know didn't foul. It was contested catch, and, and you know he got a PBU. So um, we'll, we'll need everybody available that that we can have moving towards Saturday night. Have you ever been a part of a two-minute drill like that on either side, where basically <clears throat> one guy and all runs in one screen, you, got, you know, moving down the field that quickly in that t part of the game? Um, you know, every two-minute drill is uh, different. I just felt like where we were um, offensively, the fact that you know we were getting the ball back, that you know where we had timeouts, that that's that's the way that we chose to to attack last night. That could be different, um, you know, going going forward. But each game is different. Um, you know, I thought our guys did a nice job, and even when we threw the screen to Derek, was well blocked. Um, he made a good cut, and uh, guys were finishing down the field. Hail Mary, you didn't rush anybody at Brady. What are the risks of doing that, and what's the benefit of dropping 11? Well, uh, you're, you're trying to figure out if, you know, maybe they're trying to get 10 yards and, and try to, a long kick or 15 yards and try a long kick, and that's, that's where you get into uh, situ situational football. Um, you know, sometimes you could blitz at the end of the game uh, or at the end of the half. Um, you know, but I think our guys – you know, understood, you know, kind of when they transitioned down into the end zone uh, to carry him down, box him out, and um, jump and, and bat it down. But there, you know, you, you kind of play that, sometimes you play that game. You know, we've been successful where, you know, we've had you know, some of that defense in and, and guys have scrambled around for 17 seconds and ended the game. Um, and then there's a trade off, and then there's sometimes guys will, convert and, and, and head to the end zone, and then you're going to have to defend a Hail Mary. Um, you know, you kind of go back and forth, but, you know, figuring out what you're going to do, making sure that the players can, can execute it uh, in, the, in the most critical time of the game. Who uh, ended up with game balls and made <clears throat> players with notes? Uh, I just think right now that the, the Titans, I think everybody that played in that game contributed. Um. You know, Rashawn was very active, as was physical. Kenny, I thought Kenny, um, you know, played safety how I envisioned safety being played. Uh, he was physical, threw his body around uh, f for his team. Uh, you know, offensively, we got a lot of great efforts up front. Came off the football. You know, certainly Derek uh, played very well, but you could kind of feel the line of scrimmage moving. In the in the direction that we wanted it to go, I thought Dane played well on special teams. I thought we punted the ball for the most part, we caught, caught the punts clean. So again, there was a lot of a lot of great efforts. Field position in the second half was um, heavily in our favor. So that that's a testament to to all three phases. I'm surprised to I guess get an understanding of, of Tom Brady's well, Instagram uh, video on Sunday, and, and I guess. Did you reference that after the game? Uh, I reference a lot of things. I, I mean, you know, just trying to focus on the Ravens. You know, Tom's active on social media. I'm not quite as active on it. Um, I can never. He won't ever ask, ask answer me if he does it or if he has somebody else do it. So I'm not really sure. But I, I'm not as um, involved in social media um, as maybe my wife or my son or Paul would be. <laughs> <laughs> TJ, 
you a trophy uh, for, I guess, for last year's win. Is there any return for that uh, when you see him next or bigger things at hand? You're in this league a long, long time playing and coaching. Um, you know, it's it's unique to be able to, you know, compete or coach against uh, players that, that you played with or coaches that coached you. Um, I'm sure it'll come up again, but I'm going to keep the trophy um, that Tom gave me. What kind of an impact has uh, Tremaine Brock made, uh, especially – Last few weeks. Sure. You know, I mean, he's he's a veteran corner that that's seen a lot of routes, that that's seen a lot of uh, different receivers, um, and I don't think it's an easy thing coming, um, maybe here in, in the middle of the season. You know, we run a lot of coverages. I'm probably different than head coaches that he's played for, and uh, I, I think he's kind of gotten up to speed pretty quickly. Um, and I appreciate his efforts. I appreciate his his willingness to to try to do it um, how, how we're coaching it to do. Um, so we're going to need a lot more of that on um, Saturday night. But I think mean, that's you know you play for two different organizations and then you come to a new one. Um, and so I think you know th there's probably some apprehension, but I think he's he's bought in and is, and has tried to help us, and he has. Did you have, uh, when you look back at uh, last night, were there any running plays where you, <clears throat> like basically everything was blocked exactly as it's drawn up? And, or maybe even more plays like that than in an average game? Um, I mean, there were some well-blocked plays, you know, where Derek, you know, I mean, usually the ones that are well-blocked is, the, you know, the you see him, you know, into the second level untouched. Uh, there was, there was some, there was a few of those. Um, you know, again, I thought Keith and Arthur, um, and Sully and, and, and Tony Dews put together a, a good plan for the run game. I thought our players understood it. You could tell by how they played and how they came off the football that they were confident in the plan and you know they knew what to do, which allowed them to uh, play fast and aggressive. So you know, it, it, it's hard to run in this league, especially against that defense, multiple looks. Um, so. You know, every week's a new challenge. You know, we'll have, you know, have another huge challenge on Saturday to try to find ways to move the football and and be good in the red zone against a defense that's that's very good in the red zone. What's Top four, I think. What's the week like as far as recovery and preparation for another Saturday game? Well, Tuesday will be a Wednesday. Wednesday will be a Thursday. Thursday will be a Friday. Um, and then we'll kind of travel on Friday and, you know, It'll be nice that we just come off of a, a late game with, with an 8-15 game. So we'll stick to kind of the schedule that we had with, you know, getting them up, meeting a little bit, walking through, and giving them some time to, to get in their routine. Thank you, guys.